Hello and welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep. This is Monday Boring Objects. Monday's Boring Objects. Hello. How are you? Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. My name's Jason Newland. And... Yeah. Yeah, man. That's it. I've got a YouTube channel. It's under my name. I've got a Facebook group called Jason Newland's Boring Group. And that's it. I've actually no idea what I'm going to talk about. So I need to pick a really boring subject. A boring object. Um, now I probably, I might end up repeating myself. Hello and welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, I might end up talking about something I've already talked about. So I need to find something that I haven't talked about before. What could it be? What could it be? Be to be to be 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 something a bit random. Just give me a couple of seconds. I'll think about something. Bam, 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 bam. Something that's actually relevant to my life. Something that I've, you know, that I can, that I know a little bit about. So ideally needs to be an experience of mine. Dun, 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 dun. What could it be? What could it be? What could it be? What could it be? Um, there must be something. There must be something. Coat hangers, I suppose, because I'm looking at coat hangers, but I don't, I'm not sure where that would end up going. So, um, have I spoken about elections? Have I? I know I did a podcast about. About elections, but I don't know if I actually spoke about elections in my boring objects. It sounds like something that I might have done. It does. It does. It does. It does. Um, ba, ba, ba. No, no, I haven't talked about elections. So I'm going to talk about elections because I've seen a few over the years. So yeah, let's talk about elections. Yeah, man. I, because I live in the UK of England Commonwealth. I, I'm trying to think what my first election I ever remember. That's E-L-E, you know, election. Although it would be quite interesting to do an adult version of this and talk about some more personal stuff. But, that might um it might pop the illusion that I'm family friendly. So I think the first election that I recall if I remember was I think it was nineteen eighty eight. And I think it was Margaret Thatcher against Neil Kinnock, I think. 
I'm going to check this because if it is, I'm going to be very, very uh, excited. Elections UK. So let's have a look. List of elections. No, 2024. No, uh, no. General elections. Okay, here we go. So I think it was 1987. It's not actually given me... Oh, come on, it can't be that difficult. Blimey. Oh, it's because I've gone to the Parliament website. They're asking me to put stuff in. List of UK by-elections. Oh, no, not by-elections. I don't want a by-election. Proper elections. Elections in the United... Okay, that'll be it. Wikipedia. Elections in the United Kingdom. Come on. Come on. Come on, uh, what are you doing there? Uh, elections using the additional member system, which is a hybrid of single. No, it's Wales. Northern Ireland. What about the English ones? Or UK, rather. UK. Scottish Parliament. List of newspapers. No, I don't want list of newspapers. Why do I want that? Counts United Kingdom 2017. Right, I got it. I founded it. So, the first one I remember was 1922. And, <laughs> no. Wow, 1931 was the biggest margin. The biggest margin anyone's won by. Blimey. 60.7%. I don't know if that's how many people voted, but 60.7% of people voted in 1931. And it's the highest percentage in the history of um, UK elections. Well, since 1922. Mm. Three, I'm just, oh, let's go back to the, to 1980, 1997. Was it 97? I wonder what month it was then. Not 97, 87. Uh, so 87, it's not even given the, the, the company. 1987, let's go. 1987, 1987. So my memory of an 87 is it was... Arthur, Neil Kinnock, did I say Arthur Scargill? Neil Kinnock and Margaret Thatcher. So Margaret Thatcher won the election. She was already Prime Minister. And she came in in 1979, I do believe. James Callaghan was the leader, the Labour, and... The election was 3rd of May 1979. And then... Does it have a date? 1987. 11th of June. 1987. Yeah, that would make sense. So I was 16. I was living above the chip shop. I moved into the chip shop about April time 1987 and I remember going and getting some getting a big large sweet corn and pineapple pizza and it was the first election that I ever set up all night to watch I have talked about elections because I remember they're generally on a Thursday so if I'm repeating myself never mind <laughs> never mind eh? Hey? I'm going to talk about UK and American. They're the only ones I've really... It's not that they're the only ones I've taken notice of, which they are, but they're the only ones that really... The newspapers and the news you know, news on TV generally focus on. 
I mean, they do. We do. They do like focus a little bit on if there's a new premiere in France, Australia, um, Ireland, maybe like Italy, around sort of you know Europe place time, uh, Russia, and yeah, and Canada. New Zealand, India and China and Pakistan and possibly various parts of Africa as well. Other than that, they don't really cover much. But they de definitely focus upon the... I mean, I think in South Africa when... Because you had, what was his name, Christy Berg, when he was Prime Minister, or President, and then, what's his name, not Gaddafi, oh, Winnie, my wife, I love my Winnie, what was his name, um, Mandela, Nelson, so when Nelson became and he was, he took over, didn't he? So he was, I don't know if he was a prime minister or president, I'm not sure. And I think his wife might have been uh, prime minister or president before him. So I'm, so, you know, there's glimpses of that, but I don't, haven't really got quite into that as much in the past. But I do remember the 11th of June 1987 and I was at an age where I could stay up all night and still work the next day and function just about very tired of course I was very tired but I managed to do it and I don't even know why I was interested in the election because I don't know why I, I really don't know because I didn't really have I didn't live in a political family I don't mean like that, that my dad wasn't my parents weren't politicians I don't mean that it's just there was never really a big kind of political stance in conversations really it was if anything, it was kind of more right-wing, conservative, very much how things were in the the 80s, I guess, like late 70s and 80s, because the conservatives ruled the roost. So I, I suppose that was kind of the way things were at that time. But I always, I always quite liked Neil Kinnock. I always liked people with red hair. Gingers, I like gingers, and I don't know. There's something about his little his little freckly face. I just thought, because I had a freckly face at the time. The freckles turned, <laughs> the, my freckles turned into acne, and then they just turned into blotches. And that's all I got now. So yeah, I used to have freckles. I did, I did, I did, I did. You know, some people cover up their freckles with make up they do they use make up to cover up the freckles I just like why obviously do what you want nothing to do with me but why I think freckles are nice but then it's like yeah it's got nothing to do with me is it I'm just saying you know I never covered my freckles up and girls used to say that I was cute. It stopped once I got to about 10. But before that, I was cute. Girls thought I was cute. And then I went to high school. And I didn't seem to be cute anymore for some reason. So I remember going to the chip shop. But well, actually, it wasn't a chip shop. It was next to the chip shop, the other chip shop. Because I worked in a chip shop, but this chip shop was round the corner. 
but it was also closed because it was open the same time as us. It was literally around the corner. It wasn't far to go to get there. It's like down one road and then down the next road and you were there. Or down the end of town, turn left, you were there. Very close. Very, very close. A bit too close. I thought it was a bit strange and they had a restaurant as well because there's a restaurant in my place. I mean, arguably, it is an argument, but we had the best chips. Like my my boss was, he taught me how to make chips and they were great, really good chips. Fluffy on the inside, but crispy on the outside, how chips should be. In my humble expert opinion, in my humble genius <laughs> opinion, Oh yeah. You know what? The fact is, I probably would have still been doing that job if I'd been, get, been getting paid good money. Because I feel I was quite good at it. I was. I feel quite good, quite good at it. And I was. If I just had, if I'd had enough to live on, I'd have been all right. I think. And if I wasn't a kid, because I was just a teenager. And I had a normal kind of life style. I think I'd have been alright. Because I was pretty good. I used to have people come in and just literally wait for me to cook their food for them. Because I knew how to do it. And you get to know the regulars. Because I was there five, six days a week or whatever. So I got to know people when they come in. And just it was that was the best. I think the best and the worst and best part. No, no, the best part, the best part was the people the worst part was not having any money so that that was the worst part of it but the the good part was being around all the staff were lovely I got on with everyone pretty much I mean occasionally I was I was very moody and but generally like you know Gen I don't know, maybe I'm lying. Maybe I'm but I might be deluded. But I think I was alright most of the time. Yeah. I, I me oh God, I remember the a bloke came in and I thought he was a delivery driver or a delivery person. He was bringing these these big um they were like big cans of oil which we used for the fryers, so they're very heavy. And he was bringing them in so he could help me go and get the rest of them off the, out of the back of the car. And I said, hey, do it yourself. And I walked off. And then um, my boss came in and said, uh, or no, the, my boss's wife came in and said, that's my dad. I said, so? <laughs> and apparently that was important to her. So I went and did that. And, and it turns out he owns he owned loads of chip shops in the West Country or wherever, which is where they they used to work before they moved and got the chip shop there. So I didn't make a good first impression with him. Yeah, it happened a lot actually. That I was, that's I had a, one bloke came in, and it, he's what did he? He was bibbing his horn outside the chip shop. I hadn't been there a long time, but I'd been there long enough to be in there on my own in the evening. So I clearly must have been there a while. So this bloke pulled up his car and was bibbing his horn like, yeah. And he was waving. I was like, just wave back. And he just kept bibbing his horn, so I went out. I said, what's up? He said, oh, can you get me some... Uh, it all made an order out of his car window. I said, come in like everyone else. So he came in. He got. <laughs> I gave him his food and he left. He had the ump. The next day, my boss came up to me and said, uh, we need to have a chat. And he said, that bloke that stops outside, you take the food out to him. And it was the the tough guy. It was like the this bloke was the toughest bloke in the town. He was 
everyone was scared of him and including my boss I imagine and I said oh okay fair enough that's what I have to do but ironically me and him ended up being getting on really well me and this bloke I'm probably the only person that stood up to him in the last 20 years accidentally by the way I didn't mean to I was just a bit rude I just did just like, like no one else gets delivered to their car why should it's, it's not McDonald's it's not a drive through that I didn't even know what a drive through was back then we didn't have them in this country I don't think do you know we we got a, there's a drive through for a boots chemist or pharmacy a drive through for a pharmacy I'm not, I, I, that, that that just seems really lazy I suppose for someone that's um, I guess in a motability vehicle or you know fair enough because they can't means they don't have to get out of their car so that makes sense but it's just it doesn't it's just it doesn't seem right to be collecting something from a window if you can't eat it. It just seems wrong somehow. Maybe it's me. Maybe I've got the wrong attitude. <laughs> what other things? So yeah, anyway, we became, he was a boxer, ex-boxer. And I asked him to train me because, you know, loving boxing and that. And he said that he couldn't. I said, just train me, otherwise I'll duff you up. And he laughed. He said he couldn't because he was scared of hurting me. Which, I mean, I wasn't expecting him to punch me or anything. But he he just, he was like the tough, toughest guy in town. And he was a ex, you know, he was, <laughs> but he was lovely. I got on really well with him. And I knew him for, from then on all the way up to, 19 the beginning of 91 probably January just before I moved to London and I remember seeing him in town he was telling me about a fight he'd had <laughs> it's just and it was just I liked him he made me laugh and he was just I don't know it's hard to explain but and then his there was this one time we were in town in the, the the another town, and I was basically I I, I saw my neighbour, who I'd known for years since I was like seven or eight years old. So bearing in mind I was now twenty, yeah, twenty years old, and I saw I saw them in the next town. So I oh, right, right, and I also knew the I knew him. I also knew his daughter, and because she was best friends with this girl that I used to live next door to, so I've known it, I've known them all for years. But this, and it was weird because we were just walking, and he was going to give me a lift home because they were all going back, so I was getting a lift, catching a lift in their car, and these two really large men young young men but large probably in their 20s 25 or whatever I don't know started uh, I don't know sort of chatting to his daughter let's call him Mick I, f I forget what his name was but let's say Mick or Tony or Bob and and she said Ugh, to them and that upset them. And it was like, what are you saying? Uh, and uh, so Tony, or Mick, said uh, she can say what she wants. And they were like starting to kind of square up to him. And he was just laughing at them. So he's been too, honestly, they were like six, four, six, five, six, six, the big old fellas. And Mick or Tony or whatever his name was, he handed me a bag because he had a bag of shopping, and I didn't take it. I just didn't know what to do because I was shivering. 
shivering with fear. And in the end, they walked off. But he was, a, he, was a, he was about to have a fight with both of them in the middle of the street. This was on a Saturday afternoon, probably half four in the afternoon in the summer. And he said to me, why didn't you take my bag? I said I was scared. Because I just assumed in that moment that because I was the only bloke there, regardless of the fact that I was, yeah, I was 20, but I was skinny as anything, that as there was two of them, they weren't both going to be attacking him. Probably one of them would be coming for me. So I was getting ready to push the girls in front of, in front of me and run. Well, as it turned, <laughs> as it, I wasn't, yeah, sure. As it turned out, it all kind of subsided and they walked away. And he was saying to me, why didn't you take my bag? Which is really weird because even though that was all happening, he was still completely alert to what he was doing. The fact that I didn't take his bag. Because you think about it, you got his two a potentially very difficult situation about to happen two I mean they were big big lads and he was concerned about his shopping I mean I'd have just ran and dropped everything I'd have dropped my shoes my hat I didn't have a hat but if I did have a hat I'd probably let that drop drop on the floor that's what I can never understand with the um What's his name? You know, whenever he was going through the, uh, not Monty Python, and the Holy Grail, not Dennis Potter, um, not Evil Knievel, Harrison Ford. So, you know, whenever he'd go and the, the cave would be shut in and he'd go and reach through and get his hat, just buy another hat. How attached can you be to a hat? And the amount of money he was getting paid for those movies. You know, just get a new one, man. I mean, you could literally get a new one for each take. Why put yourself in danger? If it's bad enough, you have to eat monkey brains. Blimey. I mean, you'd need a hat. you need something to be able to... Ugh. Anyway, that was, that was an interesting one. But he's... He was a nice bloke. I nearly told him, um, nearly sold him some jewellery once. But it's weird. It, working in that chip shop, this is turning into a talk, me talking about the chip shop, isn't it? It wasn't supposed to be. What was I supposed to be talking about? Elections, behind me. What happened though is I got to know the taxi drivers. Because he was a taxi driver. Oh, I didn't mention that, but he was a taxi driver. So... I got to know the taxi drivers and a lot of them were like the tough guys of town. Just weird the way it worked, just that's how it was. So I kind of got to know two of them really well, him and another bloke. And again, he, he was like a mountain. And he'd tell me all about his fights when I saw him. <laughs> just, it was weird because literally I, his arms were bigger than my whole body crazy and it's strange how they seem to take to me maybe just maybe they were scared of me <laughs> yeah yeah always always got on with tough people for some reason I don't know why even at school I was friends with the tough the tough kids or well, I got on with the tough kids just always have done in my year I was I was friends with yeah all the tough kids there was one that was quite tough that I didn't like but he wasn't he wasn't the toughest so it didn't matter and the worst thing about it is two of the tough kids that were my friends ended up having a punch up in the last year of school it was like a dominance thing to see because one of them was always the toughest kid in school in the year all the way up to a fifth year. And then the other one, who took up boxing, 
he was already a tough one and he was massive as well but he kind of um, decided I guess he wanted to be the, 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 the number one and then I had another friend who no one would mess with because he always win he never lost a fight so I was always friends with these people it's weird I mean the one that took up boxing he actually pushed someone nearly through a window when they like started on me once I think that was in the fourth year I, I still don't know what it was about He's, I guess he was just having a bad day and I was in his way and he starts pushing me and my friend grabs him and yeah they both got in trouble and I went and saw they were both staying outside the headmaster's office and I went up to I said thanks to my friend I said thanks for that um, and I said to the bloke the kid that did it like what are you doing what are you doing that for because me and him were supposed to be friends not like bestie friends but like got on okay I'd been around his house okay he wasn't at home but you know never mind it's still I hadn't been around the other one's house so it's in some ways you could say well, what it was is sometimes I'd go it, it was one of it was one of those people that I went around the house and I was never allowed back there was a few of those incidences and I'm not really sure what I did wrong but I managed to do it whatever it was I managed to accomplish it and there was one that lived around the corner from me and there was these I don't know what there was like a heap of dirt or something and we were jumping up it and jumping off and wrestling and I didn't even I knew him but I didn't know him he just did my year and for some reason we ended up like playing with each other in <laughs> in the greenhouse <clears throat> in the cinema no we ended up like <laughs> sorry that is very childish we ended up like wrestling <laughs> <laughs> wrestling that doesn't sound in the mud that was that doesn't sound any better does it we ended up but I apparently I got over the I went I got too excited <laughs> that sounds even worse <laughs> oh dear by excited over the top over over <laughs> overjoyed I've been living in my house of love uh, um, yeah, so that was a Stevie Wonder song. I, yeah, and because I kept jumping off on and landing on top of him. <laughs> However, I did explain this, it sounds weird. And I got carried away. And I was banned from his house, I was never allowed back. And it was weird because I enjoyed it but I think because I had two older brothers a rough and tumble wasn't really a new thing for me okay that sounds weird but you know if you're two older brothers one's two years older one's four years older so we'd be fighting or play fighting or just it was just normal to have that really you know not not anything too bad but just there yeah, so I wasn't that didn't really faze me another friend I used to go around and he had a he had a violin it's not really relevant to the story but it helps me remember the person it was a different person because I had another friend that had his whole house was musical like he had in his front living room he had a piano and a his dad was a pianist pianist and uh, there was a cello violins all trumpets 
come to think of it, I think it was a music shop. He lived. He lived. He lived above a music shop. That's it. It wasn't his. It was. It wasn't his front room at all. Oh blimey! I'm making myself laugh. This is ridiculous. <laughs> I wonder why there's so many guitars in there. Lots of music as well. Anyway, the um, see, so I was friends with him, but he moved away because he was part of my private investigation company. Well, it wasn't my company, but I was kind of shareholder. There was three of us that were in it, or four of us maybe, and we were all private detectives, and we'd run around with pretend guns. No, they, they, they wouldn't be invisible. So we'd run around town with pretend guns, like shooting each other and stuff. I remember doing it during Christmas period when it's really busy. And I just thought, you know, they they weren't pretend guns. They were, they weren't real guns, but they were, the, um, you know, like plastic things. We'd have looked silly walk running around with uh, invisible guns, wouldn't we? So, especially as I was thirty-two at the time, yeah. and we. Yeah, that was a that's a weird thing because so I, I was friends with him, but he moved away. I really liked him a lot, but he moved, and then there was a, a young lad. I say I think he was a year younger than me. He lived around the corner, so we ended up walking to school together because I literally would be going at the same time. So we got to know each other a little bit. He played the violin. I used to play the violin. We had nothing to talk about. But it got to the point where I'd come into his house and I'd wait for him to get ready and I wouldn't I mean I wouldn't wait for him to get dressed. It's not like I was I wasn't hiding <laughs> in a cupboard or anything. Again, this is weird. No, what I'm saying is I'd I'd go in and sometimes I think his mum would be there and she'd be talking to me and eventually he said to me that I was banned from going inside the house. So that's another house I was banned from. What other houses was I banned from? So there's a, there's the other one. So there's one, two, three. There's four, maybe four or five. Pretty much anyone I went to, the only, the only people that parents that put up with me, I wasn't allowed. Even my best friend Dean wasn't allowed in his house. His dad didn't like me. And he was my very best friend. Occasionally I'd go in. But I never, I don't think I ever got to go into his bedroom. He was in my bedroom all the time. Okay, not all the time. But he just came and went. Came as he wants. Just came up to my room. And I used to eat with my family sometimes, you know. It's just, he was almost part of the family, really. But. I wasn't allowed in his. I was never invited for dinner, I don't think. But he did live in a... <laughs> this is going to sound like I'm... He lived in a in an old people's home. Some would argue that you shouldn't have friends with a 90-year-old when you're 10, but... No, he wasn't 90. He was... His dad owned the old people's home, and he lived in... in that house, you know, with the the residents and whatever he didn't live with them I think they lived separate I guess I don't know I was never allowed in his room so unless he slept in the kitchen I doubt it though and I wasn't allowed in there yeah, I'd knock on the door and I'd have to wait outside for him to come out I didn't really understand it I'm so lovable. The other one, I had another friend. I, I basically, I would say, as far as the most times I ever went around anyone's house, or okay, 
there's only two two people's houses that I went around a lot over the years and that would be my friend around the corner a different one and then another one that lived further up his distance but so they were the the one man in the corner had a mum and he had two brothers and stuff and she was always welcoming to me always really lovely and then the other the other one his parents let me know how annoying I was but they were all always welcoming to me always I used to stay round in fact it's the only place I ever stayed round when I was a kid never stayed round anyone else's house the whole of my child well from the age of seven I don't know before that but from the age of seven I never stayed around anyone else's house but his it wasn't very often and I didn't ever have anyone stay around my house because I didn't want anyone in my in my bedroom really yeah or, or did I maybe I did I don't know not whether I did want it or maybe I did they did stay around I don't think so I don't recall it It was weird though because when I moved into the chip shop like the, the flat above the chip shop I had I was 16 I turned 16 in the end of the August and I moved in there probably about it was Easter time 1987 so it would be I can even check that can't I Easter 1987 Easter 1987 let's have a look so Easter was the 19th of April I moved in pretty much that week leading up so I remember having hot cross buns on the 17th which is the Friday the Friday good Friday so I had hot cross buns on the 17th of April because my friend came round that's my friend Neil he came round and had uh, had some hot cross buns with me and a cup of tea and we watched Words or Gummidge I had nothing really I had a few little bits and bobs and I did my dad had some stuff in storage like beds furniture stuff from when I was a kid so I had some of that thing, some of that bits and bobs. I sold most of it just to get a bit of money so I could, you know, get food and that later on. But so I ended up sleeping on a mattress on the floor. I didn't have any cupboards or anything really. Near the end, there was really nothing in there. But I just remember that's really weird because he came in and he just he he was the only friend out of everybody or anybody that I went to school with the only friend that ever came round really in fact he's the only friend that stayed friends with me after school when I left school my best friend we kind of we kind of gone our own ways. We had a had a falling out, had a punch up, and I don't know when it was, but after that, things weren't the same. And I I, t- I do not take the blame for it because he he pushed it and kept pushing it and kept pushing it, kept pushing more. JJ kept what did he what did he push? No, he just he pushed me into it. I didn't want to. I kept I kept trying to say I wouldn't. I don't want to. I want. I don't want to. And he was like, "Well, I'm bigger than you." And I was like, "Yeah, everyone's bigger than me. That's just the way it is at the moment, you know." But he didn't understand. So after that, we kind of, yeah. I don't know if that was in the fourth year. It might have been in the third year, or the fourth year. So we were still friends, but we weren't like close anymore really and I still dream of him 
it's weird because we were almost inseparable for a long time but my friend the the other one uh, out of all the people that I was I would sort of say I was close to or quite close to lost contact with all of them and I was living in a tiny little town I'd still see people because they'd come into the chip shop and buy some chips and people from school and I'd be sort of seeing how they were getting on and sometimes they'd stop and give me a lift you know so it was quite cool but I didn't have any regular contact apart from just with one friend that I that was in my year at school and when I moved into the chip shop because I was also I was seeing him uh from when I left school at 15 and I was still friends with my other friend even at school but as soon as school ended that was he he just went and did his own thing and I, I don't really know what happened I guess we were just in different places literally lived around the corner from each other but hey in different places but my friend, the one that I did kind of keep in contact with, his parents gave me loads of stuff for my flat, like cutlery, plates, probably a, a kettle, toaster, and other bits and bobs for my flat, which was lovely. It's like they didn't, I don't think they realised how much it meant to me. And I didn't tell them, <laughs> probably. I, I'm sure I must have said thank you. But that was that was a very weird time. That was probably one of the loneliest times. I don't get lonely anymore, but that was a time when I was probably at my loneliest, living in that flat on my own. My stepmum, who I'd had as a mum since I was seven, gone. And my dad was still... He was still going through the process, I guess, of the, of um, you know, the divorce or whatever. So he was doing his own thing, and yeah, it was a lonely time. I had me then, and that was it. She used to come. She used to knock on the window to say hello to me, quite regularly, like throughout the week, constantly, like just not walking past. I don't even know if she was going anywhere. She might have just come to see me. And she, sometimes she'd come in. If it wasn't busy, she'd come in and say hello. If it was busy, she'd knock on the knock on the window and uh, just wave. So that was nice. And I had contact, I had regular contact with her, her and my granddad. And my dad, you know, once, you know, he did start coming around and sort of check and make sure I was all right and that. And I used to see him at family gatherings, like birthdays, Christmas and stuff like that, I suppose. That was weird times, weird, weird times. There was one really strange thing, and I, this was someone that I really liked a lot. And I was friends with him from junior school. And we we started karate at the same time. Well, he started karate. He, he he said to me, I remember we was at school, and he said, I'm going to go and go into the karate club and just watch it because his brother was there. And I didn't know his brother. And he said, oh, well, I'm going to go and watch it and see. I might join. I said, well, can I come along? He said, no. And I said, oh, please. He said, okay, then. So I went along with him. And we just sat on the the benches at the side and watched it. And I think we both had the same... This, 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 I think we had the same kind of thoughts. And, well, actually, maybe not the same. I was thinking... I think we probably had different thoughts. I was thinking... Because I found out, because I asked him. I was thinking that this is amazing I've got to come back and do this I want to, I need to learn this 
it turns out he was thinking that I was sitting way too close why don't you sit further away there's loads of space and this I think this was either a Tuesday or a Thursday because they were the two days when the club was open so Tuesday or Thursday night 7 to 9 I think so if it was a Tuesday night I would have gone back the, the Thursday for the first actual session if it was a Thursday night I would have gone back on the following Tuesday for my first session And we both went together. Now he 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 did it for a while and then he stopped doing it. I'm not really sure why. But I got on I got to know his brother really well because he was he was I think he'd only just started himself, but he was really good straight away. And he skipped a grading, I think. His first grading he's, he went straight to orange or whatever instead of going fire yellow and uh, yeah it was weird because this is a we did a contest I'm supposed to be talking about the elections now I'm talking about karate I always seems to get back to karate it's almost like I have a fond memory of it we had this contest it was a an actual fighting contest thing that I went to a tournament um, I don't know where it was it was a few towns up so I got a lift with one of the I got a lift with one of the adults uh, who was one of the higher grades or well, I might have gone with the I might have even got a lift with the instructor I can't remember so we went there here's something and not many people can say they've done this this is pretty groovy one of the higher grades I think it was a brown belt but he purposely didn't go for black because he wanted to stay a lower grade so he could win contests and he was brilliant he could have easily got black he just he decided he couldn't be bothered he didn't you know and he was probably in his blind everyone looked old back then didn't they I would say he was in his 30s, but he might not have been that old. He might have been in his late 20s. But I was like 13, so to me, he looked... Anyone over 20, when you're 13, anyone over 20 looks old, don't they? Anyone in their 30s looks about 90. <laughs> Maybe not. So... He got married, or he was getting married to his future wife it's kind of obvious isn't it so lots of people were invited now I wasn't invited to the wedding but I was invited to stand outside the church for when he walked out after getting married you might be wondering what's that about ah I think I was in the I was in the, the paper as well, newspaper. So what it was is me and another lad who's I'm not sure who it was. We stood outside the church, the church um, main entrance or exit, depending on which way you're going. After the f not the funeral, the wedding. After the wedding was finished, he walked out. And we were both standing there holding swords, like crossed swords, and they they walked underneath that. And I think they even had, a, had, a, had a, people taking pictures, but I think they had a, I think it was in a new, local newspaper. It's a long time ago. It might be in some archives somewhere. One day, I'll show you a picture of me. I need to do that, don't I? I need to do a picture of me in my uh, karate costume so you can see because you might think I'm lying why would I lie <laughs> you know millions of people have done karate when they were kids 
but I do have a picture of it not of that but a picture of me wearing my gi and how cool is that it was cold though so we, we all dressed up and holding these swords that were quite heavy they probably wasn't much lighter than me at the time so we're holding them and all I was thinking please don't slip please don't slip I just had an idea like oh cutting off the bride's head would really go down badly that it could really put a dent in the in the wedding so I thought oh please but it went okay in the end we didn't have to hold it oh you know for everybody to walk under just for them and once the photographs were took that was it now I don't remember if we was invited to the reception because ultimately I was a kid I just do not remember anyway we went to this uh, what was it this tournament I think it was the first tournament two things that really stood out three things actually four things the first thing is I got a lift up there and it was I think it was with my instructor Paul and so he took equipment with him in the back because at one point it was either him or it was one of the other adults but they said to me can you go to the car and get the bag I've left the bag there so I went I went to the car took his keys went to the car pressed the buzzer or whatever and walked up to the car opened the the, the back of the car started looking through and I realised I was in the wrong car so whoever they'd left their their car open and I was basically looking through someone else's stuff now that that it's not ideal in any situation but when you know that every single person there Every every driver probably had some kind of connection to a karate person, someone that was doing karate. So it's not a good, you know, it wasn't it wasn't a good position to be in. So when well, there was no money there either, I checked the front. I didn't. I didn't. So I closed. I closed the car. And I went back and I said, uh, "What colour is the car again?" And he said, "It's red." So I thought, "Okay." So it's definitely not the blue one I went in, or the green one I tried, and that's why the black one wouldn't open. So it's um, the red one, and I, I think I found it in the end. It's weird because it's the car I came in. Okay, again, I should rephrase that. It's the car. It's the car that I arrived, um, travelled to the place with, in, <laughs> and a few. There was a few standout moments. One of them was my instructor won the black belt contest. So out of all the black belts, he won. He won the whole tournament which was cool it was an area event but it was cool to there's something quite groovy about that my instructor was the boss the other thing that stood out was my friend's brother who then became my friend who was he was probably an orange belt at this point and the weird thing about it well maybe green belt orange or green belt he got teamed up they were doing it by age not by weight not by size by age so they put him in with someone that was smaller than me and he was the size of a fully grown adult you know six foot one six foot two grown man and he was a grown man even though he was young 
he was only like 12 or 13 himself so but he was a fully grown you know he's one of those that was just uh, developed like early and because he was like maybe 12 or 13 they put him in with another 13 year old and it didn't go very well for the other 13 year old and they had to stop it and I think he got disqualified because he was too big I made that part up I'm not sure if it happened or he might have just won the contest I'm not sure I don't remember I mean I, I remember I know my my contests I think I did three tournaments the first one I lost the very first uh, contest the very first fight the second one I won the first fight and lost the second fight and I think the third one I won the first two and lost the third and I remember the first and I kept getting in trouble for being scrappy because it ended up just being a fight without any technique at all but that's just it was I guess I, I struggled to control myself and they did as well so it was just one of those I think it was, it was a lot of fun though but I still I remember that the I think it was the third fight I had in the last week the last uh, tournament I did so I had a bit of confidence that I'd won two and I was about to go into the third one again this is like a, a vague memory so it a lot of it might be not true or you know sort of mixed memories but this next bit is completely true because I remember and there was this young lad he was smaller than me which is unusual and I did not stand a hope against him I mean he could have punched me all day long and it wouldn't have hurt me but his speed he just kept like punching me in the stomach in the face and I didn't see it coming and he'd win a point and I'd look and he'd be behind me and then he'd be under my legs and he'd be just like it literally I didn't I couldn't touch him and that's when I realised that I'd lost <laughs> basically and I didn't have a hope he just it was speed the speed of him was amazing and I kind of realised that's what I needed to maybe do maybe but I don't, I don't know if I really had that kind of speed but I didn't mind because he went on to win it so I didn't mind that again that might not be true it sounds better though doesn't it I lost to the eventual winner yeah I did I lost to the eventual winner ok but you went out in the first round yeah but you still went on to win it but you went out in the first round yeah but you went on to win it you literally ran out of the ring after the bell rang yeah but you went on to win it yeah but it doesn't mean anything if you didn't actually participate I saw that once you know where there's two boxers ready the the, the, the bell goes and one of the boxers gets out of the ring and runs back to the changing room. Never find I didn't find out what happened there. Let's check out. It's got to be on here somewhere. The boxer who walks out of ring, out of ring after first bell. UK. Curtis Harbour Curtis Harper Blimey He laboured in obscurity for most of his eight year career as a professional boxer but by now most boxing fans have seen the video of Harper walking out of the ring seconds after the bell rang for the start of his August 24th fight against Effie Ajagba at, oh, it was Minneapolis, it was in America. 
this is in 2018 I remember that wow I thought it was in the UK for some reason I watched it in the UK so I guess it's kind of the UK-ish that was weird I mean I don't think it was I wonder if it was the headliner it might have been possibly I don't know I think it's the first time I've ever, I've ever seen that really I've seen a few weird things in a boxing ring lots of weird things it, one of the strangest things was Lennox Lewis I know was it Riddick Bowe and Evander Holyfield and a paraglider landed in the ring this is in the 90s the early 90s a paraglider landed in the ring and got caught up in the in the ropes. Do you believe me? I can tell you. Paraglider boxing. If I just put that in, I bet you James Miller is known as the fan man. Really? It was known Blimey. It was known as the so James Miller, the para, pa, the fan man. So there's a parachutist, but paraglider. Yeah, it appears. Um, it was known for he used to upset sporting events. His most infamous appearance was November 6, nineteen ninety three against uh, Ivana Holyfield and Riddick Bow at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. He made headlines in the United States. Yeah, so he crashed into the side of the ring. Oh, what? Oh, there's a sad ending to that. Not to the to the Ivana Holyfield event, but... Blimey. Nine years later, he, um, or ten years later, he was found. Yeah, blimey. Okay. It's still a weird event, though. I mean, there's the obvious Mike Tyson weird event that happened. But there's a few. So there was a weird one, I tell you. Um, Golok, Golotin, Golot, Golotin. What was his name? Galotta. Galotta. It was Galotta. Bo Galotta. Galotta. Andrew Galotta. Fought Riddick Bo twice. Disqualified twice for low punches. Twice. Two. They had a rematch and it was disqualified again. And you know what? He was beating up Riddick Bo twice as well. And you say, of course he was. He was, he was punching low. No, besides that, he was winning those fights. He put Riddick Bowe down, and he was winning those fights. Riddick Bowe, uh, Andrew Golota, should have been a heavyweight champion. If he had just kept his hands up higher, he would have been a world champion. But nope, he didn't. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't. So he fought for the world championship in 96. No, wait a minute. I don't know if he was a world champion when they fought, though. Was he a world champion when they fought? I don't know. The purse was two million. Riddick Bow got 600,000 for Andrew Golota. Gollot yeah. I don't know if that was for the world title or not and he's 56 now it's quite weird because he fought everybody I mean he carried on way too long he went up to 2013 I mean he was getting beaten by people that didn't even go on to sort of make a name for themselves really But yeah, he. 
Okay, so we did fight. We did, didn't do too bad. He fought for the two world titles. Lost. But in 2005-2004. So that was pretty good. He also fought for the IBF. So yeah, blimey. 2004, he fought for two heavyweight titles. He drew one, lost one, and then 2005, he lost. The t um, he went for the WBO. So the IBF and WBA in 2004. So he didn't win those. Wow. So if, but if we go all the way and back to 1996 he fought Riddick Bowe neither of them was for a world title and he got disqualified twice for repeated low blows however the next year he without having another fight he got a chance to fight Lennox Lewis for the WBC heavyweight title which just shows you how highly regarded Golotto was because he beat up Riddick Bowe in both of those fights he was winning however Lennox Lewis put him on the canvas quite quickly But he fought everyone, Witherspoon, Corey Sanders, Jesse Ferguson, Michael Grant, Orlin Norris, Chris Bird, John Ruiz, Lamont Brewster, Kevin McBride, he's, he's known because of Tyson, Tomatz Adonek, um, and that's without all the others that he fought before that, Riddick Bowe of course, um, he fought Mike Tyson, Mike Tyson knocked him out or you know with Mike Tyson he wouldn't get out of, he wouldn't go in for the next round because Mike Tyson just was beating him up so he didn't he wouldn't go back and his his manager or his trainer or whatever was trying to push him into the ring to carry on fighting and he wouldn't and I think he had an injury which, which is fair enough but uh, originally a retired win for Tyson later ruled no contest because he failed a drug test well that's not something that's really mentioned very often is it Mike Tyson fell on a drug test I didn't know that happened that's what it says here it might not have happened though wow so it just shows you with uh, Galotta 96, so that was him at his peak. So he beat Riddick Bow up twice, but lost twice because of low blows. Fought for the world title against Lennox Lewis in 97. Um, lost that one. And then he, f then he lost one fight against Michael Grant. He lost, originally lost a tight, tight uh, fight against Mike Tyson. Then it was classed as a no contest. And he still kept getting chance after chance to fight for world titles. I mean, literally three times in two years. Which I think is quite impressive, to be honest. Bearing in mind, he was probably in his 90s then. Everyone's in their 90s. The 90s, yes, oh, yes. I mean, when he fought for the world title against John, against uh, Chris Bird, he had 38 wins, four losses, and one draw. He won no contest. And then he fought the next one, 38 wins. Five losses, thirty wins, six losses. To literally to lose two heavyweight title fights in a row. Okay, one was a draw, so I suppose it's kind of a loss, isn't it? It's, it's not. I suppose it's not a loss, is it? 
no, it's not a loss, but a lot of fighters would class that as a loss. Why am I not talking about <laughs> why am I not talking about elections? I don't know. I don't know what happened. I think what I'm gonna be the the, the title of this recording is gonna be I didn't talk about elections. I think it's gonna have to be that because I didn't, did I? Let's face it. The bottom line is I didn't talk about elections in it. What can you do? What can you say? Who can you who can you blame? Who can you who anything, eh? Anything? Huh? Huh? I don't know. Sixteen, sixteen, pinky, 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 boo, boo. Ba mama, bum 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 bum, bum 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 bum. So yeah, that's it. Um, I'm pretty much at the end of this recording. So thank you for listening. I don't know what I've been talking about. Remember to be kind to yourself because you do deserve to be happy. Lots of love. Bye. Bye. Relax in a more deep and meaningful way, maybe in a way that can not just allow you to feel calmer now and throughout the time we spend together here, not just relaxed at the end of the recording when it's finished and you can enjoy that sense of comfort and peace, but also I think it would be nice to have those feelings of relaxation continue for longer after the recording is ended. So that you can still benefit from listening to my voice maybe in a few hours time perhaps tomorrow and then by listening regularly especially if you find like some people do, and myself as well. I Sometimes I'll find one particular recording that really resonates with me. And I'll just listen to it over and over again. Like every morning, every evening. There was this recording from, we're going back to about 1999. It, was a, it wasn't hypnosis, but it was a guided visualization. So it kind of was hypnosis, really. And I managed to find it again, and it still has the same effect on me. And part of it was... person's voice 
relaxed me. It just felt so peaceful. And I'd look forward to listening to her in the morning and in the evening. And I knew before even pressing the play button that as soon as I'd done that, pressed the play button, this was in the days of CD players, press the play button. In fact, it might have even been a tape, tape recorder. I'd lie down on the bed and then even without necessarily listening to her words because I had them memorized really. It was as if my body knew exactly what to do. And the muscles just almost went into automatic relaxation. And I remember my mind would slow down. Now, now, I was, I was listening to this recording in the early days of learning hypnosis. And long before I ever made any videos or audio recordings myself because I didn't start doing that till 2006 but I knew I knew how helpful I found being able to just let go, to have that trust in the person that I'm listening to. Knowing that it's going to be just as relaxing, if, if not more so, each time you hear my voice, you may feel the same. Some people have been listening to me for over a decade. Maybe not solidly, obviously not 24 hours a day, but maybe people come back. Some people maybe listen every day. And something that I do which you may not realize by listening is when I record these recordings now, for example, I also am affected by the words that I say. 
So if I said to you, focus on your feet, notice your feet relaxing, I will be focusing on my feet. I will be noticing my feet relaxing. If I said focus on your hands and maybe notice the difference between each hand. Perhaps notice the, the air in the room, the temperature of the room on the backs of your hands. You may start to notice what almost feels like a very light breeze, even though they're may not be any type of breeze at all where you are right now. And as you become aware of your hands, I'm also aware of how relaxed my hands are feeling now. And when it comes to potentially drifting off to sleep, which may be the reason you're listening. I also feel drowsy when I make these recordings. I also notice my mind drifting. In fact, at times, I've actually fallen asleep. Without even noticing. And then I carry on talking. It's only when I listen back to do the editing, I hear snoring and I think, I don't remember snoring, I remember talking, is it snoring or is a pig turned up? That's what I sound like when I snore. And I get really into the whole experience. I don't know how you feel. How relaxed you feel in your feet. How relaxed you feel in your hands. I have noticed more and more that 
that are more relaxed, deeper, level of comfort you feel, the easier your breathing becomes. It's almost like that additional muscle relaxation. So this allows you to breathe easier. without necessarily focusing on your breath. However, being able to notice ease in which you breathe so naturally Breathe so very easily and smoothly. my breathing improving when I've got my eyes closed I tend to visualize beautiful field with trees and flowers producing all that life-giving oxygen. Feels nice. To, if nothing else, just taking some time away from everything. Enjoying that feeling of peace, serenity. with a joyful heart. It 
time seems to just drip by. So very slowly. So deeply peaceful. Completely. Unattached. To any thoughts whatsoever in this moment completely free Noticing that your mind has slowed down slowed down. Because nothing really requires your attention. You can enjoy physical sensations of allowing the stress to drip out of your body. Drip in out of every of your body. And being released from your brain and your mind. Slowly, but surely, the muscles in your legs
deeply. Pleasant feelings in your arms, in shoulders, deepening each part of your body. Further and deeper and deeper. In the feelings in the back of your neck, the feelings in your wrists, muscles in the front of your body, are also feeling deeply there's a sense of peace spreads through your very core. Even when you focus on your mind, your mind becomes even slower. Relax. 
relaxing. Very slow. Your stomach. Peaceful in your stomach. Your back. Notice how relaxed you now feel. spine, from your brain all the way down the middle of your back, sending and receiving millions of messages every day. Comfort increasing. Deeply relaxed. Spreading those signals down your spinal cord into every part of your body. Your shins and your calf muscles.
your elbows. Feelings of peace and tranquility spreading through your body. Tips of your toes to your eyes, your fingers. All the way to your lower back. And letting go. Really letting go. Drifting. Mind. Just wandering away. Happy to let go. So tranquil, your whole body. Joy and a sense of letting go. Even more.
Enjoying the space, this space of peace and safety. Letting go. Maybe we can just focus on the different parts of your body. Just to notice forehead and your eyes. So loose. Noticing a sense of 
complete freedom. Absolute freedom. Peaceful energy. have noticed your mind drifting Peaceful. Blissful peace. Blissful peace.
total peace. Letting go. body body feels almost invisible. And you could start to notice that you are feeling more relaxed. Even though I've not purposely focused your mind upon that sense of physical comfort that is growing within you throughout your body. And your mind starts to slow down. And that could be almost in recognition of, I guess, my speech not being particularly fast.
and things just generally feel calmer just by listening to my voice you give yourself a, an opportunity to take a break from the day take a break from your life as it is and to give yourself a rest giving yourself permission to take some time off and to allow your body to relax and allow your mind to slow down which in turn releases the tension any stresses that you had in your body it's almost as if the parts of your body just open up allowing the negativity out and at the same time replacing that negativity with positive healing energy which then fills your body up and your mind to also starts to appreciate those feelings of increasing confidence and an almost uplifting feeling a positive healing an energy that spreads through your body like a wave of comfort and all this comes from just allowing yourself a few minutes maybe half an hour however long you want it to be to just rest and allow your mind and your body to almost reset itself to the, to the settings of comfort and relaxation calmness which allows more room for feelings of pleasure and happiness to move around your body and into your mind almost as if your mind and your body are sinking together almost mirroring each other with that growing positivity and calmness and it feels nice it really does feel nice to know that you are the one that has allowed yourself to feel more comfort and to experience more of this deep relaxation spreading throughout your body and as I focus on each part of your body 
you can notice that that part becomes even more relaxed just by focusing on it becomes even more calm and comfortable just by focusing and as I move down your body starting at your head the parts that you've already focused on will continue to relax deeply and those parts that we've not yet focused on will just automatically release any remaining tension in anticipation of even more comfort about to come. Now, I'm going to start by focusing on your forehead. Just being aware of the feelings of your forehead. And any background sounds like Mr. Herbert the Pigeon can just allow you to feel even more relaxed. It just means you're in the moment. This isn't this isn't a sterile environment. This is the world. I live in the countryside. So there's lots of nature sounds around. So as you focus on your forehead, just notice how it becomes even more relaxed as you focus only on my voice and that part of your body. Moving down to your eyes, focusing on your eyes, noticing how the, your eyelids feel so heavy, yet so light at the same time, and all the muscles around your eyes relaxing. Completely moving your focus down to your mouth, your lips, your tongue, your teeth, and your gums, and the whole of your mouth relaxing. Focus now on your jaw, not just the part of your jaw near your mouth, or your chin, but all the way up the sides of your face to your ears, that whole of your jaw, feeling more. in on your neck, the front of your neck and your throat, relaxing and loose and calm, the sides of your neck, the right and left side of your neck. Relaxed and loose and calm. And now the back of your neck, focusing. 
focus in on the back of your neck. Letting go of any tension that may have been there before and enjoying that sense of increasing comfort and release that you can experience in the back of your neck. Moving down your back, moving either side of your spine, right from the top of your back, all the way down to the bottom of your back. Down to your lower back. As you move up and down your spine, you can feel the muscles either side of your spine relaxing even more. And as those muscles relax, that sense of comfort starts to spread outwards from your spine into both sides of your back. The top of your back, the middle and your lower back. And as you scan gently and slowly up and down your back as the muscles in the top of your back relax and become looser. The muscles in the middle of your back also seem to just almost divide from each other, separating and almost melting. And in your lower back, there seems to be an extra special feeling of comfort. that spreads into your hips so down your lower back into your hips into the area where your coccyx are and into your buttocks and all those muscles that spread from your lower back into your hip area, start to melt, start to really let go, and you know we're about to focus on your shoulders, your back and your spine. Continue to let go, continue to relax, so calmly, and as you focus on your shoulders, you may notice that they're already Feeling really loose. They're already feeling calm. And they're feeling 
those muscles that move from your neck into your shoulders. It feels so soft and gentle, so smooth. Feeling in your shoulders seems to spread deep into your shoulders. That sense of relaxation, not just traveling deeply into your muscles. Also relaxing the bones, and moving all the way to underneath your arms, relaxing that whole area between the tops of your shoulders and underneath your arms. Healing you feel so relaxed and comfortable in your shoulders, which sends that deep healing message. your arms and you may feel almost as if your arms are not even there because they're so relaxed so spreading all the way down your arms to your elbows, including your elbows, circumference spread forearm and send your wrists feeling so heavy yet at the same time so light and gentle Focusing now on 
a sense of real peace. It just seems to feel so familiar. Tips Attention to the front of your body. muscles in your thighs your knees
muscles and just shins completely I'm going to start counting down now from 20 down to 1. You can imagine, in a way, it's like just walking down some steps. And each step, all 20 steps, and each step represents a level of comfort. Each step 
represents a deepening of that comfort. And the further you, you walk down those steps, the deeper and more relaxed you feel. So, starting with number 20. Seventeen. Sixteen.
14. Thirteen.
hate. Seven. Six.
as you focus on your eyes, I'm going to count down from ten down to one. Focus in just on your eyes. your eyelids, the muscles around your eyes, your eyeballs themselves, that whole area that makes up your eye. And as we count down from ten, down to one, whilst focusing on your eyes, you'll become twice as relaxed with each number counting down, and you may find do is just drift off to sleep, and if that's what you want, then just allow yourself to do that, now, focus in on your eyes, going to begin counting down from ten down to one, right now, ten,
cuerpo. So counting down from ten to one, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Three, two, one. And maybe that was a bit too quick in order to relax. Maybe it's a bit too fast for you to notice the calming of your body. Maybe even a little bit of pressure there like 
You are counting down from ten to one. What do you expect me to do, man? You expect me just to go all floppy? Just because you're counting down? You could try it again. But this time, I'll go a bit slower. This time, as you focus on the whole of your body, before we focus on your legs, just notice how your body does start to feel more relaxed with every number that I count down. Ten. Seven, six, five, four. just notice how how you feel generally how your body feels it's not necessarily even about counting down from 10 to 1 it's that space that you have that space between being active physically or mentally to just sitting or lying down and just being there not doing anything not saying anything not needing to think think about anything so it, op it opens up a space you know a bit of a space a gap and the more I count down from 10 to 1 the bigger that gap becomes so there's that gap of calmness of comfort, relaxation. It's a nice feeling. And it moves those stresses or discomforts physically or emotionally, moves them away. allows you to just slow down so I'm going to count again from 10 down to 1 and notice that gap widening 
the gap. And as it widens, it's almost like the the stress and the tension falls into the gap. It gives you that distance, that space now. Ten. Seven, six, Three. How does your body feel now? Can you notice the, that you're feeling calmer? Feeling more relaxed. As we now focus on your legs. Just your legs. We're just going to start with focusing on your thighs. course it's not the most exciting thing to be doing because I'm, I'm sure like most of your body there's not a lot going on right now just focus in on the whole of your thighs the tops of your thighs the sides of your thighs, the bottoms of your thighs, your outer thighs and your inner thighs. Basically the whole of your thigh that leads into your hip. And then 
and goes down to your knee joints. Now this is a big area. It's a very heavy area. It's very strong. Probably the strongest muscles in your body are in your thighs. But I don't think we perhaps give enough attention to our thighs. Perhaps we don't acknowledge how important our thighs are to our lives. How much they actually do for us all through our lives. And it may, it may seem, sound really weird, but I think that all of our body parts, especially our thighs, need some TLC a bit of love shown a bit of acknowledgement a thank you gratitude for what our thighs do for us And I know this may sound a bit strange. Maybe you think, why am I? Surely I should be out in, in the garden hugging a tree or something. Well, it's hard to set a microphone up on a tree. That's why I'm doing this indoors. Otherwise, I would be outside hugging a tree. No, I can't see the television from the tree. If you move down to your knees, again, such an important part. And, and I think we don't necessarily, I'll speak for myself here, I don't necessarily appreciate all that my knees do for me until I have a problem with my knee. So occasionally if I have a Maybe I bash it or it's aching for some reason. It's then that I realise how much it does. You know, the benefit of being able to use my legs without any kind of physical discomfort is a beautiful thing. That's possibly not appreciated until... It's temporarily removed, you know, that comfort. But as you focus on your knees, regardless of how your knees feel, you can have that sense of gratitude and love to your knees for all that they do for you. And you can still have that attention on your thighs. Maybe notice how your thighs feel. Maybe you've noticed that they are relaxing more deeply. And as you focus now, on the bottoms of your legs, your shins, and your calf muscles.
muscles, the bones between your knees and your feet, incorporating of course your ankles, so important. had even a, like the slightest sprain of an ankle knows how how much we take our ankles for granted and it's kind of strange in a way when you think that you know logically our wrists are a lot thinner than the rest of our arms which is okay doesn't can't see any problem with that because we're just picking stuff up but our ankles are so much thinner than the rest of our legs and from a physics perspective or logical even it doesn't really make sense that all this weight would ultimately be resting on your ankles then leading to your feet that thin area thin bone yet it does so much great work supports us, supports our body for a lifetime Helps us to balance, helps you to get around and be mobile. And it's the calf muscles, of course. When I was younger, I couldn't see the point in calf muscles, they didn't seem to do anything. Okay, if I walked around on tiptoes, then my calf muscles get some work. But of course that's not true. The calf muscles are being used whenever we use our legs. And your shins. They're to protect your lower legs. shaped in a way almost as a protector of the bone leading of course to your ankles and your feet but we're not going to focus on your feet we're just going to focus on the legs I realise that now that I've mentioned your feet, you're probably focusing on them anyway. So maybe I should focus on your feet a little bit. You can have them in your awareness. The same as you have your thighs in your awareness. Even though we haven't been focusing on your thighs for a few minutes. You've been focusing on your ankles. There's still that sensation of comfort in your thighs. Almost that movement of energy because the thighs hold lots of different sensations of course there's the muscles the big strong muscles that we have in our thighs but the skin on the outside of the thighs as in the outside of all of our body can be very sensitive 
sensitive to the touch, sensitive to temperature. And inside your thighs, the bones, there's the muscle, there's the blood vessels, the arteries. So all this stuff that's inside your thighs. And I guess sometimes it'd be nice if you could actually put your fingers inside your thighs and massage. So you can massage on the outside, of course, but to be able to get deep into the muscles, to be able to just massage inside your thighs, massaging the bones of your leg, massaging all the veins and just gently healing your thighs. You could move down, massaging inside your knees, just massaging those bones, but with healing fingertips, spreading that healing energy deep into the joints of your knees, and of course there's the back of your your knee, you know, the inside crease where your knee is. It's a very sensitive area. Very, feels very nice when you stroke it. That might be because it's an area that's not really touched very often. It's almost like a hidden part, that crease in your legs. It's almost like a part that has a, a sensitivity which is a little bit different. Of course it's protected by your legs. So you can imagine putting your fingers into that crease in your legs. Fold in between your legs. You can just massage with your fingertips. Imagine your fingertips going inside, massaging the muscle tissue. You can, of course, feel the the bones of your knees healing through your fingertips. And then as you go down to your calf muscles, now that's a part I'd like to be able to really put my fingertips deep inside my calf muscles, massaging every single tissue of that muscle, healing every part. Doing the same for my shins, massaging and gently stroking the bones, gently stroking them, healing in a loving way, because they deserve to be treated as the precious bones that they are, because our legs are so precious, as in all the other parts of our body. They're more precious than any jewel on the planet. And when you start to think about your legs in this way, it can change your perspective. It might sound a bit, a bit silly to start with, the 
idea of having love for your legs, showing appreciation for your thighs, wanting to be able to put your hands in your thighs and massage the muscles in the bones and to get your fingers deep in there, releasing all tension, just to show how much you care about your legs, how much you care for what your legs do for you regularly, your knees, your calves, your ankles, the strength of your ankles, considering how thin they are compared to the rest of your legs, especially your thighs. Yet they're so strong, so flexible. Absolutely amazing things your ankles are truly a gift because of what they do for you. Supporting all that weight, regardless of how what weight you are, even if you're only eight stone. Still a lot of weight for these little ankles. Now I'm a lot heavier than eight stone. Double that. Yet my ankles support my body all the time. Although they do give off a sigh of relief when I sit down. As a in fact, my whole legs do. My feet, feet also go, whew, and my toes clap. I'm so happy. legs really are amazing and I know that talk about, talking about your legs is probably possibly among the most in, most boring things you've ever heard anyone say possibly but boring or not everything I said is true your legs are amazing. Your legs deserve not just respect. They deserve to relax deeply. They deserve to take some time out of the day to just let go completely. can relax and because the legs are so such a most you know a very important part of your body when you relax your legs the rest of your body also naturally follows in that 
journey of comfort. I can feel it in my hips. My hips feel really loose. And also in my lower back as well. My lower back really feels, it feels stretched. Even though I'm just sitting in a chair and there's no stretching as far as I'm aware that I'm doing. But it's almost as if the muscles are just relaxed so much that there is a natural stretch as the tension has reduced a lot. down from 10 down to 1 and you can continue to feel wonderfully relaxed 10 9 8 7 Six, five, four, three, two, one. Relax. I'm just going to count down from five down to one. And as I count down, if you just focus on the numbers, just the numbers, counting down, and notice how you feel in this moment as you hear the numbers counting down, knowing that those numbers counting down represent you feeling karma not just in your body but also relaxing your mind and just notice how you feel there's nothing to do there's nothing to say there's nothing to think about Starting with number five. Four. Three. One. And as you notice the gradual letting go of the tension in your body. You may also begin to notice and be aware of how your mind is starting to slow down. This is just a natural thing that happens. It's not really a special procedure. It's just natural because as your body relaxes, your mind also starts to relax and the more 
your mind relaxes, the more your body relaxes. It's just a continuous circle of relaxation. And there's that calmness that comes from relative quietness. You know, even even if there's background sounds, either your side or mine, it's still going to be quite calm. You know, you haven't got the television on, there's no music in the background unless you're listening to the recording with music, of course. You're very likely not going to be sitting in a room with other people. Of course you might be, but generally it's more ideal if you can do this on your own. So, no distractions. And when you stop thinking about stuff, relaxation automatically rises. A sense of comfort starts to grow. And without trying to build it up into something fantastical or something magical, this is just a natural process, something that's easy to accomplish. In fact, it's almost you know, the sense of relaxing completely happens really when you put no effort into it. It's not something that you can really force. It's something that happens naturally and part of the process of this recording and others is simply to allow you to take advantage of this space, this time, to just let go, to just be here, to be in tune with how you feel. Yet with the intention of wanting to relax deeply. And maybe even to fall asleep depending on what it is that you wish for yourself in this moment. As we know, relaxing is the majority of the process of falling asleep. The actual falling asleep part is the tiny bit at the end, the deeper relaxed you become, the easier you find yourself drifting. You can also, if you choose, stay focused on my voice and really enjoy the process of gradually Relaxing each muscle.
also. In your body. Effortlessly. And just observing the sensation of letting go. This time I'm going to count from six down to one. And you can notice your mind calming down more with each number that you hear me say. Six. slowed right down sinking deeply into relaxation As you focus on your mind, you may notice that there are 
there's some thoughts still there. Maybe some stubborn thoughts that for some reason perhaps need your attention. So what you can do is Send love to those thoughts. Sprinkle those thoughts with love. Like little petals from a flower. You just sprinkle it over them. Petals filled with love towards those thoughts. To let those thoughts know that you're not abandoning them, you just need them, you require them to just calm down, slow down, quiet down for now. As you focus on those remaining thoughts, as we count down this time from seven down to one, with each number, just imagine sprinkling those flower petals of love, kindness, gratitude over those thoughts. Which will allow them to just melt away and relax deeply. With every number. Those thoughts will become more Starting with number seven.
around you now. Notice how relaxed you're feeling in your body. We're going to focus on your hands. Because the more relaxed your hands are, the more relaxed your body and mind are. you focus on your hands and your fingers there's nothing needed to be done there's no clenching of fists or tensing the fingers or anything like that it's just noticing Focusing on your hands. Noticing how they feel. Because the more your hands feel, the calmer your mind feels, and the more comfort you feel throughout your body. that your mind is starting to drift Just on your hands and fingers, allowing them to experience a real deepening of that relaxation. number from eight down to one you can almost feel that healing and relaxing energy spreading into your hands Stop. 
melting with number eight. Seven. Just being here now. Nothing to think about. Nothing to do. Nothing to say. And everything just feels calmer. This is your natural state of being. This is how you just normally feel when you take away all of that other stuff that we add. You know, things like stress and worrying and overthinking and anxiety. Generally thinking about stuff. You 
take that away, which is what we do, what we're doing now. We're left with a real sense of peacefulness. which comes to you very quickly. Because ultimately, it's just a feeling. A feeling of comfort. It's almost as if you've gone inside yourself and you've found a special place where Everything is peaceful. A place where you can feel relaxed and your natural sense of comfort. A place where you can be you. Where you can accept yourself who you are, a place where you're not trying to please anybody else, ever, a place where you can actually not just love yourself, but in some ways more importantly, you can like yourself. Appreciate who you are. And that sense of gratitude is in the air all around you. And that's also a place where you actually feel the healing energy soaking into your body. Healing energy soaking into your body. And that healing energy spreads through your veins. Traveling to each and every single part of your body. And you start to realize that actually that healing energy has not just entered into your brain. It's become part of your brain. spinal fluid is now mixed with healing energy. Not just allowing you to feel so much more relaxed and healthy in this moment. But also you start to realize that actually what's happening now with that healing, relaxing energy spreading through your body is actually changing your life. It's actually changing the way you're going to feel not just now, but tomorrow and the next day. As your health improves, not just your physical health, but your mental health. Things that used to bother you in the past, for some reason, no longer 
have the effect that they used to. Because something has changed deep within you. Maybe things that used to cause you to feel anger no longer have that power to control you the way they seem to be able to before as you realize that you're the one who decides what affects you you're the one who decides to feel relaxed and calm when you choose to enjoy noticing these natural developments of healing continuing to grow and improve your life day by day. Including of course your ability to relax so much easier and sleep in It's the most natural thing in the world to you. Because falling asleep is something that you've done so many times in your life. And you know that you were born, as we all were, with the ability to fall asleep naturally. We were born with that ability to just drift off into a deep healing sleep. Even when we're kids, sometimes we'll fall asleep when we don't even want to. We try to even stay awake. Maybe it's a birthday in the morning or it's Christmas or holiday or something we look forward to. We don't want to go to sleep. But the more we want to stay awake, the more we just start to drift. And the more you fight drifting, the more you try and stop yourself from drifting asleep. The deeper and stronger that drifting becomes. Because we're born not just with the need to relax deeply and to naturally fall asleep. But it's our birthright. It's part of our DNA. And sometimes as we get older in life, perhaps at times we have forgotten that relaxing completely it's not only a wonderfully pleasant experience, it's also really easy. It's very, very easy. 
easy to let go because that's all it is is just deciding to let go and when you press the play button on my recordings you have given permission for my voice to relax you when you press that play button you have given me permission for my words to affect you in a positive only a positive way opening up your mind to useful and healing suggestions can have such an amazing effect on how you feel right now as well as those changes that continue long after the recording ends changes within you that continue to flourish and grow transforming your life in a positive beautiful way allowing you to move forward in your life in the direction that you choose for yourself and this feeling this feeling that you can experience of safety comfort calmness This feels so nice. It's such a healthy place to be. And that positivity grows within you. to find that you're more relaxed physically and in your mind is more relaxed and it's not that you're thinking slower it's just that your mind will be less clogged up with unnecessary negativity because from now on your mind rejects negativity from now on you're going to start noticing when negativity arises you can just say stop stop and that negativity will turn around and leave you alone stop 
と、and that negativity would disappear. As you notice that you feel way more relaxed than you probably expected, you can now congratulate yourself because you're the person that has done this. You. Are the one that has opened your mind up to the simple facts that you can feel more relaxed in your body and in your mind. You've opened your mind up to the birthright of being able to just. Fall asleep easily when you choose. And that's a nice feeling, don't you think? Feels nice, doesn't it? To feel calm with all that healing. Is spreading through your body and your mind. To spend time in that that special place where negativity can no longer enter. Negativity is banned. It's barred. It's not allowed entry. Doesn't doesn't des doesn't deserve to be here. Doesn't belong here. Negativity has no place in your life. Makes room for more comfort, more healing, more relaxation, more peace. Feels nice, doesn't it? To just let go of everything. And I'm going to count down now from twenty down to one. Continue to relax. If you choose, you can drift to sleep. With every number, you hear me say, you can feel twice as relaxed. Or if you choose, you can feel twice as sleepy. Now, twenty. Eight. 
18. This is your time to just take a break. Your time to relax, to allow your mind to slow down. To give yourself permission to take a break from everything and you're the only person that can make that decision. You're the only person that can actually tell your mind Just relax. To just take some time off. So that you can focus on your body getting in touch with you feel physically and in the process of this body scan where you focus on different parts of your body those parts focus on and observe, even though you're not purposely requesting for those parts of your body to relax, it's kind of expected, you expect when you listen to my voice to feel more relaxed. 
naturally. Because when you're listening to me, your attention is focused on my words. And as my words guide you, the focus on those parts of your body. focus increases which actually calms your mind and when your mind calms down body relaxes. And when your body calms down, your mind relaxes. focus on your body, you can already feel that healing energy spreading through your body, pushing out stress and tension. of your body, including your skin, your bones, your blood, all of your organs inside your body, all of the muscles, all of the fat, all of everything, every hair on your body is filled with that healing energy. feeling of comfort, of relaxation, increases. Deeply increases. In a way that starts to feel perhaps a bit drowsy, because it's not needed, and it may start what's needed. So if you're listening to this and what you need is deep relaxation, that's what you'll get. If what you need is to fall asleep naturally and easily as your mind drifts, that's also by pressing that 
play button on the podcast and you're listening to me, I give permission for my body and my mind. In fact, I give the command to your body and drift off to sleep, if that's what you want or need. And as I focus on the different parts of your body, Focusing on a different part of your body. And you may find yourself drifting. But you don't realize you're drifting until you stop drifting. Because that drifting is basically you already in the sleep zone. And the more you drift, the longer you drift, and the longer you drift, and eventually that drifting continues to sleep and that's the last you remember until you wake up in your own time when you experience the right amount of sleep for you because when you do and if you do sleep, it's extremely pleasant, so relaxing, so deep, healing sleep. Feel that healing energy spreading through you, relaxing you so deeply. Relaxing your soul so deeply. 
let's focus again on parts of your body. Focusing this time on your forehead. Now on your mouth, your lips, your tongue, the whole of your mouth. Focusing on your fingers. a little bit so you can focus on each one individually. Both hands. And even though as you focus on both of your hands now, they may seem to just melt into one. your right hand start and your left hand end, almost as if they just mix together. Now focusing on your knees, just noticing how your knees feel. Focusing on your elbows, focusing in on both of your elbows, just observing the feeling of your elbows. sensations in your ankles,
go of everything letting go go of everything everything I'm going to start now and I'd like you just first of all just to see yourself lying down on that massage table lying on your front your head is supported your arms are supported and you feel comfortable and the breathing is really easy and you feel you feel confident in how you look as well so there's none of that issue of body problems or shyness because I'm a professional and this is a therapy session so none of that stuff matters whatsoever this is about you this is about how you feel and how you can enjoy that sense of comfort and relaxation that comes from letting go and allowing my hands and my fingers to relax you by massaging your body. I want to start off just by placing my hands on the back of your head, just gently, just so you can feel what my hands feel like really on you, so you can maybe feel the warmth of my hands on the back of your head, I'm going to move my hands to the side of your head, not pressing but just holding there very gently, maybe over your ears and a little bit on your face, just so you can feel my hands, so you can become accustomed to them. And now put my hands on the back of your head again and gently let them slide down onto the back of your neck. You can 
and feel my hands. Gently stroking the back of your neck to start with. Just so you can get used to the the feeling of my hands on your skin. Get accustomed to it. Realise that you're safe and it's all good. It's all fine. And I'm going to start gently massaging the muscles in the back of your neck. both hands. Now this is a very trusting situation really because our necks are so fragile and to have someone have their hands around your neck in that way can sometimes be problematic for people which is why massages are quite good because it allows you to relax and to get in touch with trust to feel peaceful and calm and as I massage the sides of your neck gently Moving from the bottom of your neck, which would be sort of near where your shoulders start, I guess, all the way up to your jaw, your ears kind of area, that side of your neck. Of course, is a lot longer than the front of your neck. Massaging the the back of your neck, especially that area where perhaps we hold tension. And as that area is massaged, you can actually feel a sense of release in the back of your neck. And maybe you can breathe it out as well. Notice how it feels. Notice how you feel. Then moving down to that area between your neck and your shoulders. That muscly area. Starting to massage that area on both sides. I mean, this would be the area that a lot of people would massage if they were going to give you like a shoulder massage. Even that's not technically the shoulders, but it's all the muscles that lead to the shoulders. From the neck. And again, that can hold tension and stress. And when massaged, sometimes a nice deep massage is useful. you decide how deep that massage is. And just allow my knuckles just to dig in to get to those muscles and to really relax them all the time being firm yet gentle with you and just stroking down that area to your actual shoulders 
move into the muscles of your shoulders. And maybe initially just pulling up the shoulders a little bit off the table, just to give you a little bit of a stretch, but very gently. And you've got the muscles at the front of your shoulders, the sides and the back. This is a part that can really take quite a bit of pressure, quite a bit of uh, needing, if if you wish, to really release the tension, to really get into those muscles and let your fingers in there. And you can feel really nice. Sometimes it's just being stroked gently or being massaged quite strongly. It can all be beneficial to the relaxation. Of the muscles in your shoulders. Now as you move down your arms, you do one arm at a time, starting with your right arm. And what I'll do is I'll just lift your arm up, just hold it to the side of you. I want it to still be attached. And I just massage the tops of your arms. All the way down to your forearms. Into your wrists. Gently massaging that part, the softer part, which is the under part of the arm, which leads to the crease in your elbow, the inside. It's much more sensitive skin. Sometimes just having that stroked can feel really nice, pleasurable and relaxing. Now moving down to your right hand. Just holding your hand in both of my hands. Just pressing gently on the back of your hand and stretching your fingers ever so lightly. At the same time, Pressing down and massaging each finger. And then starting to massage the palms of your hand. Just turning the hand gently. Stretching it gently. Actually having your hand held can really be 
an emotional experience sometimes, even if it is with a stranger, someone you don't know very well, like a massage person or a therapist maybe, because it's intimate. safe and as I put that right arm back down where it was I'm going to do the same with your left arm exactly the same Massaging the muscles in your arm all the way down to your wrist. Stroking the inside of your arm. Just being gentle or as firm as you require. Massaging your left hand. Stretching the fingers gently. Massaging the palm of your left hand. So comforting. Now just rest your left arm back down. And start to massage your back biggest part of your body, starting at the top, starting again where we would have been, that area at the top and between your shoulders, near your neck, going back, massaging that area again, but this time moving down. stroke to the middle of your back, working from the outside inwards, so massaging the, your back but the, the outsides of your back, the parts where your arms would maybe rest against. your front to your back, and just massaging down, firmly but gently, as firm as you want. a little bit and moving all the way down again, being very gentle, yet firm as you choose, and eventually you get to the spine, you can massage the muscles on either side of your spine, from the top of your neck all the way down to your lower back, you can do
do that a few times. Sometimes we can use the knuckle or the, you know, two fingers and just go either side of the spine. Almost just push down, go all the way down to the bottom of the spine. Each time releasing tension and opening up the body, stretching your body so that you feel more relaxed but at the same time rejuvenated. to one side, to your right side, and from the bottom of your ribs to your pelvis, you're going to massage that area of your back, I'll stretch over the other side and I'll pull the muscles gently, and massage and push from one end that side all the way to my side, to the middle in fact, to where your spine is, massaging that side of your spine, the opposite side to where I'm standing, it's almost like kneading bread, there's that big area which is firm, yet lots there to massage, Potentially one of the most important places to actually have a massage because you really feel it, you really feel the release and the pleasure of having your lower back massaged, it releases so much from your body that's not useful. Starting a healing process, which will continue long after this recording is over. Massaging this part of your body not only feels really good for you, but it's actually fun to do. Because it is, as I said, like kneading bread. It's a part that you can really get a hold of and really massage deeply if that's your choice. And then I'm going to move over to the other side of your body and do the same with the opposite part of your lower back kneading and massaging from your sides all the way to the middle of your back where your spine is. Pressing and kneading. Firm and gentle at the same time. It feels so releasing. This mixture of pleasure, comfort, release, calmness, relaxation, all mixed together. Plus there's that feeling from your stomach as it's being stretched. Even though you're in your stomach now, you can feel it being stretched because that whole area is connected to your stomach. Now we're going to move, we'll move further up to your top of your body and I'm going to do the same. This time starting 
here, your upper back, put my hands forward over and mass massage in that area up to your spine from the side of your body up to your spine so some of that massage area the muscle tissue uh, or whatever fatty tissue even will be possibly from your chest so it's all connected the chest and the back connect together so we're going to be massaging and just pulling some of that skin from your side up and massaging that area of your upper back all the way to your spine and then I'll move down a bit and I'll continue with the middle of your back doing exactly the same thing as gentle or as deep as you choose now I'll move off the other side again and do the exact same thing with the top of your back on the other side from pretty much underneath your arm area really to your spine and then continuing that all the way down including your lower your middle of your back now I'm going to Go to your thighs, the backs of your thighs, and the sides of your thighs. Starting with your right leg, massaging the back and the sides of your thighs, gently and firmly. There's a lot of muscles there. It's an area that can be very tense at times and maybe needs a little bit more pressure than the rest of the body. But that's up to you. You can gently stroke the back of your legs where, you know, opposite your knee joint or underneath your knee joint very sensitive, gentle area. Then working down to your calf muscles, massaging your calf muscles thoroughly and deeply if you choose. Using both hands Fingers digging deep. To your ankles. In the back of your back of your ankles. Just gently massage in that area. Maybe lifting the leg and stretching it a little bit moving to the right foot massaging the bottom of your feet sides of your feet gently but firm enough 
so they don't tickle. And just allow the pleasure that you get from having your feet massaged to just overtake you. As I continue to massage your feet, the bottoms of your feet, your sides, your arches, your heel. You can put a lot of pressure into your heel and it feels amazing. Yet the arches need to be a bit more gentle. Stretching your toes gently and massaging the bottoms of your toes with my fingers, each one individually. And moving over to the left leg to do exactly the same thing. Starting with the top of the thighs, working the back of the thighs and the sides, massaging deeply and gently that whole area, working all the way down. This is an area that maybe you could like to spend more time relaxing and massaging. So perhaps if you wanted I could make a future recording where I spend more time in one particular area. As you move down muscles, massaging your calf muscles firmly and gently, moving down your ankle and into your feet, massaging the backs of your feet bottoms of your feet, stretching your toes and massaging each toe individually, and that feeling of pleasure and release that you experience when you're having your feet massaged, feel really Turn over in your mind, laying on your back. I'm just going to start again at your neck area. In your shoulders. Just to Get back in touch with that area. As you move up, I can clean my hands, make them all fresh, because now I'm going to massage your face gently. Starting off with your forehead, your eyes are closed and you can just stretch your eyes a little bit, pushing up on your eyebrows. And 
just massaging around your scalp. Massaging down your cheeks, around your ears, into your jaw, gently. The sides of your neck. moving down from your neck down to your chest starting by massaging the very top of your chest where the collarbone is either side of the collarbone Just massaging the whole of the chest. Moving the chest around. It feels quite a large area. You can move from one side to the next. Moving my hands underneath pretty much where your arms are, stretching up, stretching some of the muscles of your back in the process. Moving up over your chest. Just massage gently and slide down towards your stomach, starting in the middle of your chest. And then gradually my hands moving apart and massaging and sliding at the same time, moving down. Just below your rib cage. Moving down and massaging up again. Giving your chest all the attention that it needs to feel completely. So you're going to be focusing on your sides as well, an area that really doesn't get much attention, to feel really good when it's massaged. Just stroking my hands down the sides of your body, from just below your arms. All the way down to your hips. Now moving to your stomach area. I'm going to stand one side of you like I did when I did your lower back. I'm going to do a similar process of just stretching the muscles from your side. Gently massaging from one side to the next, moving that whole area from below your 
ribs all the way down to below your belly button. And then move round to the other side of you and repeat that. Process of relaxing deeply. something about having your stomach massaged that's different from any other part because we do have a tendency of holding a different kind of stress in our stomachs that we may not be aware of so now massage your stomach front of your stomach, making circles around your belly button, and going the other way around, there's a gentleness and a freedom that comes from feeling how you're feeling. So now move down the tops of your thighs, your muscles, massaging them. You can do this with two legs at the same time, pressing down, massaging deeply those muscles in your thighs, the front of your thighs. Gently massaging the knees, sliding down your shins, put the pressure on either side of your shin, gently, softly, but firmly, moving down to your ankles. Stroking the tops of your feet. And then with each foot in each hand, just gently massaging the whole of the foot. The top, the bottom, your heel, your ankle, your toes. Massaging every part of your feet. Feels so good just to let go. Enjoy the process. Enjoy feeling so deeply relaxed. comfort and so many feelings that come just from touching your skin, and you can just lie there for as long as you choose. Enjoying the feeling of deep comfort from being massaged by me. Enjoy. going to 
do is blow out some candles in your mind. There are going to be a hundred going to blow each one out individually, one by one, starting at a hundred as I count down. that candle in front of you and I'd like you to actually physically <sighs> gently blow that candle out just <sighs> this is not a big it's just a gentle and that candle will extinguish and then I'll say the next number as we move down and you can just blow that one out yourself feeling more and more relaxed if you need to sleep you also find yourself becoming incredibly tired and sleepy in fact you may struggle to blow out candles as you feel more and more deeply relaxed more and more to me after a while and even though there may be background sounds where you are you be aware of those sounds just not even notice them at all because they're unimportant where I am I've got the sounds of the birds the pigeons, 
likes to say hello sometimes. And as your plane goes by, the traffic and trains in the distance seems important whatsoever. So simple. Now we're going to start by introducing the first candle, which is a Activity growing within you. Relaxation and sleepiness expanding. Eight. 
two, five. Exhale, breathing. Nine, two, four.
anxious thoughts, worries, concerns about the past, thoughts about the future, and even things you've been thinking about today. Just let it all go. Because none of it is useful in this moment. This is your opportunity to just focus on feeling relaxed, allowing yourself to get in touch with that natural sense of peace that we all have within us. It's available for everyone. It just sometimes takes a little bit of effort to set up the right time and place in order for you to just let go. Because when you do decide to let go and relax, that's what your body starts to do. Because you've chosen, you've chosen to just allow your body to unwind and your mind starts to slow down. And it's a nice feeling. It's a nice feeling at the beginning just to know that you have chosen to decide to, to relax deeply. And because you've made that decision, your body will just follow suit. Because sometimes all the muscles in your body need is just permission from you to relax. Because so often we're busy, we're going from here to there, we're walking around and we're doing stuff. And the body doesn't have any time or space to really relax deeply. It kind of waits for you to lead the way. Waits for your permission. And when you do give your permission, and you give the say so, you can say, okay, it's time for your body to let go completely and relax totally. body just follows. It's almost like a breath of relief. Oh, feel that for me, relax. That feeling at the end of a day of a very physical day that you may experience in the past, where you get home and you just sit down in a chair, maybe you kick your shoes off and that, oh, feels so nice, knowing that you don't have to get up again for a little while at least, and if you choose you can just sit there for maybe an hour or two, and it feels blissful, and just by sitting down like that, your body knows it's time to relax. Your body has been given permission from you because it's a mindset and your mind you're prepared to let go of everything and to just completely allow all of the stress of your body to evaporate and your 
tensions can just gradually vanish. It's almost like magic, really. Because that sense of relaxation in the body is a very natural state. It's not something unusual. It may feel unusual when you first start to relax if you if you haven't really spent a lot of time focusing and giving yourself this space to let go completely and relax. It may seem almost alien. But it isn't. It's actually the most natural thing in the world to let go completely, to relax totally. The most natural thing in the world to allow yourself to feel. is almost like a literal unwinding. It's like you press a button and all the tension just releases. And it's like a wheel, like a cog, like the inside of a clock just unwinding. And it's almost like you could see the, the little wind up knob that's used just going the opposite way that you choose to wind it up. And the energy, that frenetic, stressful energy, gradually winding down, losing its power, losing its strength. As the sense of relaxation becomes stronger, deeper, and you may find that the more you relaxed, you feel that your mind starts to wander. Maybe you seem to stop listening to me for a while and your mind goes somewhere else. And when you Realize you're listening to me again. And that was just your mind drifting to sleep. Which is quite natural. Because sometimes when you're stressed and tense, we're not we may not actually be aware of what we need, what we physically or emotionally need in this moment, but when you allow your body and mind to relax completely and you let go of all thoughts, concerns, worries, ideas, all touch with the feelings of such relaxation. It feels so nice to be in touch with the calmness of the different body parts as they and relaxation and 
just breathing out any excess feeling and tension and stress from every part of your body and mind. And as you start to focus on your mind, maybe you notice that things have come to a standstill be just much, much slower than before, because your mind is not really needed in listening to my voice, which allows your mind to relax just as deeply as your body. Synchronicity between the relaxation of your body and the relaxation of your mind lets you know when feeling completely calm, loose, and positive benefits for your body and your mind and your life to be able to let go of everything and to relax completely in all Muscles are relaxed. Even the skin that covers your body is relaxed. Every hair that you have floating. focus from the inside of your scalp where your crown is, you can start to realize and notice the benefits of your brain relaxing deeply. And as your brain continues to relax, to the rest of your body and your mind to relax even more deeply relax even more completely they're no longer necessary in this moment, in this moment of deep relaxation and calmness, filling your brain with deep, calm 
Lösung aufzeigt. ever-increasing sensations of comfort that are spreading throughout your body. Relaxing each and every muscle of your body.
body scan, focusing on firstly how you feel in your body, not trying to change how you feel, not trying to relax, not trying to move away from any discomfort or stress or tension, just accepting, observing and accepting how you feel in the different parts of your body, just allowing yourself to be exactly as you are, to notice, to get in touch with how you actually feel in this moment. So I'm going to start off by focusing you to move your hands around, just maybe move your fingers a little bit, opening and closing your hands very gently, just so that you can get in touch with how your hands and your fingers feel. Focusing now on your feet. And if you can, just do kind of an equivalent with your feet as you've just done with your hands. And then turning your ankles, moving your feet around, moving your toes gently. feet feel in this moment. Focusing now on your eyes. I'd like you to just focus on your eyelids. Maybe you can open and close your eyes a couple of times to really get in touch with how you feel when you do close your eyes, the muscles, the changes in your eyes when you do close them, maybe raising your eyebrows, which stretches the tops of your eyes, perhaps squinting your eyes. scrunching up your eyes, just so you can really get in touch with all aspects of how your eyes feel right now. Now focus in on your thighs, I'm going to just ask you to gently tense your thighs, just very, very gently, just enough so you can become more attuned to the physical sensation of your upper legs, the front of your thighs and the backs of your thighs, noticing and observing how your thighs feel right now. Just 
just noticing the back of your neck, the muscles, and of course they lead to the side of your neck, they also lead to the top of your back, which lead to your shoulders, so as you focus on you're looking up, maybe moving your head down as if you were looking down, perhaps moving your head side to side, right to left, but only very slowly and very gently. force energy, it has to be very, very gentle, just so that you can be more in touch with the feelings, with the sensations, the physical sensations of how the back of your neck feels right now. As we now focus on the tops of your arms, the parts of your biceps sorry, between your elbow and your shoulders, as you focus on those parts, the tops of your arms, and then try to just tense them, but very, very gently. putting any pressure whatsoever on your arms, it's just so that you can gain more of a sense of how your upper arms are feeling in this moment. noticing as you gently, very gently and slowly tighten the muscles on your neck here. Notice how the tops of your arms feel. Just above your groin. Maybe you are able to tense these muscles in that area very, very gently and slowly. If that is a difficult thing to do, then maybe you can just move your body, pushing your stomach up, maybe moving a little bit to the side, using your hips, just so that you can get
physical sensations of your lower abdomen. And move your attention Noticing your lips inside your mouth, your teeth, your gums, your tongue. Just noticing. Pressing up against the, the top of your mouth and then down gently against the bottom of your mouth. Always very slowly and very, very gently. Just rotate your wrists and move your hands in a circular motion very gently and slowly. Just so you can feel. sensations the new and current thing experiencing in your wrists perhaps moving your hands up and down and again
person in me that doesn't agree with science of the body. Because those muscles are very much connected. If those muscles also move into a hip area, connecting to a buttocks. able to do so, maybe you can very gently just move your body ever so slightly, very slowly, from side to side. So, gently open your mouth, not wide, not stretching, just very gently move, slowly open your mouth and closing your mouth.
Everything starts to slow down. Including the thoughts in your mind and your mind itself just starts to gradually it doesn't have to be instant, but just gradually starting to, it's almost like time is stretching. It's a slower pace to maybe what you're used to in your day-to-day -day life. It's a slower movement of energy. Very small movements which make up the larger movements is always the case. And when you move your hand, it might seem like it's one movement, but it's lots of minute different muscles moving in accordance with each other. And what happens in this space? that we're sharing is we move from that big movement into those smaller movements. Starting to focus on how your body feels, not just as a whole, not just, oh, I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling stressed or tense or I'm feeling relaxed and calm, I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling that way. starting to notice that your body 
begins to present to you small feelings around your body. Small physical sensations in your legs, whether pleasurable or not. Maybe resisting the temptation to label them or to judge them, those feelings just thinking them thinking about them as just being neutral just feelings not being particularly concerned but just noticing what your body is telling you Feelings in your arms. Instead of feeling the whole of the arm, maybe notice those individual feelings. All those different muscles and the skin. internal parts of your arms, the veins, the bones, just being aware of maybe your elbow on your right arm has a certain feeling Maybe your left wrist also has its own individual physical sensation. What about your forearm? particular feeling that you could even give a name to, it may not feel like anything other than just a feeling, yeah, it's there. The feelings in your shoulders. Your shoulders, when you think about them, kind of almost like they're the same, you know, the same feeling. Almost like your both of your shoulders are just one thing. Of course, they're not. And when you focus on your left shoulder. right shoulder, maybe you find that you move the muscles a little bit, maybe tense the muscles gently, noticing the difference in each shoulder. side of your lower back and the right side of your lower back. Of course. 
slow set connection to your buttocks and to your hips. And also moving up into the middle of your back. sometimes, like right now actually, I want to focus on that part. I want to focus on my buttocks and I want to focus on my, the middle of my back. It almost felt like the muscles in my lower back were being stretched very gently. Just stretched a little bit. Even though I wasn't doing anything to try to stretch the lower back, it just seemed to happen. The feeling of very gently stretching the lower back. along that feel in your chest just noticing what sensations you Experiencing in your chest right now. And there's so much of the chest. Obviously, there's the collarbone leading to the chest, got the chest bone, you've got the muscles chest. Of course, if you're female, there's possibly the breasts. If you're male, you've got the different, I might not that different these days, but there may be more muscles at the top of the chest. But at the side, underneath, pretty much the same, whether you're a man or a woman, there's muscles there, muscles that stretch out to your back, as well as breast tissue which stretches and moves into your back. So just being aware of your chest. feeling there is in your chest. And when I notice that I focus on my chest, I, I feel it in my, my back, my upper back. I guess the obvious reason would be because, you know, I'm breathing. In. And it stretches my chest and my back at the same time. And it feels... It feels okay. A little bit of pain in my right chest. Just a little bit, not pain, but a little discomfort, maybe stiffness, possibly. 
I don't know. Notice my shoulders are also wanting to flex for some reason. I think that's probably part of my upper back. That connection between my shoulders and my upper back. So I can move my shoulders and stretch the muscles in my back. Moving the shoulders backwards or up, which then moves the, I think it's the scapulas in your back. Looks quite nice actually. The good thing about this is you can, if you want to, you can just flex or stimulate the various muscles in your body gently to get more of a sense of how they feel. And when you're relaxing, and you do tense a muscle, and then you let it go, and you let it relax, it relaxes to do that. No point doing it if there's a, uh, an issue with a per part of your body. You need to be gentle with yourself at all times when you're relaxing or deepening. It's something all the time. As you notice your mind, how much has your mind slowed down since we started this recording? Peaceful is your mind right now. With nothing to think about, and just my voice to listen to, because you know the intention behind this recording is relaxation. At the very least, for you to feel more relaxed at the end of the recording than you did at the beginning. At the very least, for your mind to slow down, as your body that's what you want to happen. That's what you expect to happen. For relaxation. Your body. 
کرده Maybe calm your mind to the point of boredom start maybe to drift away as if you are moving further away from your body and your mind, just leaving that there. Kind of like in a, an escape pod in a spaceship, a movie, a space movie, you know, and they Get into that little pod and it sends them <laughs> far away from the spaceship. Safe, free, and continue. Focusing on your breathing. If those individual parts of your body that are relaxing one by one, listening to my voice and as your mind started to imagine something different maybe you started to almost move into some kind of dreaming state Though you may want to 
safety. As you feel more comfort spreading through your body. body at rest, the perfect temperature, and even if you can hear background sounds, they just don't seem to matter anymore. There's that sense of peace spreads through your mind. Like a gentle breeze. You're strong enough to blow away all negativity. Strong enough to remove from your mind anxiety and stress that was there before. Just a slight removal from the mind down to the eight. Just another small change in how you feel. Eight down to seven. Just that feeling is 
physical sensation. Most like there's a magnet outside of your head sucking the tension and the stress and any remaining feelings that you don't like. Sucking them out through your skull. Just emptiness, but space. A place full of fresh air. A place where you can stretch. It's almost as if as you go down to four and three, your mind is expanding with this sense of peace and tranquility, growth, it's almost going to two, and then you get to one, and now it just feels exactly how sensation will be like to keep a place that's safe where nothing can affect you at all. to create this space and this feeling and comfort within your own mind just by counting from 10 down to 1 and this is something that you can do yourself for a few minutes, close your eyes, just count slowly from ten down to one, and then you experience these feelings. system into every part of your body, travels from the blood stream, healing and relaxing every part of your little existence. this in all parts before the end of the recording and then you can practice on your own you can you can from 10 down to 1 the feelings of comfort and calmness and 
positive particles that spread through your body relaxing yourself necessary for you so that you can adapt what you feel in your solar numbers turns into air faster than I do so go ahead and do that or if you feel when you do it yourself
medicine and physical form. Covers right down from plan two to one. Allowing stress and tension to leave through your fingertips and your toes. And as you focus on your fingertips, maybe they feel a little bit tingly. Exiting your body through your fingertips. So now we're going to plant our toes again to one again. This time, you're going to feel relief of tension and stress and the anxiety that you may have. Almost as if it's just releasing. You hold your stomach and your navel to just above your chest, just below your chest area. So you're surrounding your body the whole way out, through the whole area. You can feel the tension of your body, whatever's left, just releasing through that area. And you may notice that your stomach is becoming very relaxed as you count down from 20 down to 1. Now, 20. Just feel a little stirring of your body. Just noticing your body feel. Focusing on your upper body, your back, your chest, stomach, legs, navel, hands, feet. Just noticing. Focus. 
Thinking from the full cloth of eyes and the status of life. Your forehead and your eyes take on a new intensity. Almost as if you were wearing a mask. You have like a like a battle mask or something. Um, kind of like Zorro or something. You know the kind of mask that covers your eyes. Also covers quite a lot of your forehead. You're focusing in that area because that's the area that you know you're going to release tension and stress from your mind, from your brain, from your mind, and any tension that you may have with your arm and your face, and your neck, and your jaw, and your eyes, and your forehead. Sixteen, fifteen, 
yourself some space to breathe easily, to think calmly, and just to take a break from all the pointless worrying and concerns about things that you don't need to think I'd like you to make up your mind who you're going to meet. And I want to explore that with you, what it feels like when you to decide who you're going to meet. Not forcing yourself, but giving yourself that, I guess it is a command really, isn't it, when I'm telling myself a lot. So you begin to get firm now that only you can really tell yourself in that way. And you can't have someone else saying to you, you know, relax, relax. to be gentle with it you can't someone else can't really have the same the same kind of influence or power that you have over your own physicality over how you feel because when you say test it out. You can do little tests, do little tests along the way and you can get more of an idea of the thoughts, the positive thoughts that you can have in creating a sense of comfort and relaxation in your body and your mind. How quickly just by you telling yourself
just start by just, just focus on your hands. So focus on your hands and just tell your hands to relax. So just say relax as you focus on your hands. You could say my hands are light or I let my hands go. And I think if you actually do it directly Focusing and imagining that your hands kind of feel a bit solid now, like they've got little ears, just a little bit light. So talking to your hands, you just say, relax. Focus on your eyes. So tell your eyes to relax. So just saying the same word, relax. Now find the right tone for you. So now I might say relax. So you you might say relax or relax. So you know you, you might say it differently to yourself. It's important for you to gauge what feels right for you. So just tell your eyes to relax whilst focusing on your eyes, your eyelids, your muscles around your eyes, your eyebrows, and just tell your eyes directly, relax. Did that myself, and sometimes you may feel that you need a bit more time for the different parts to relax. You know, because I'll start talking about maybe one part doesn't need filling, and what will happen is it will actually start to relax even though I'm talking, and that's happening. Something else I noticed is when I started focusing on my eyes, they actually almost became, they got worse before they got better, in a way. It's almost like I felt a degree of tension growing in my eyes and then disappearing. So I think what that was really was just me becoming more aware of the tension that was already there. Focusing on, you know, not really acknowledging it or um, really actually feeling it, feeling it. Hands have got a certain kind of not 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 buzzing but a kind of feeling of like energy in my hands. Maybe that's why the tension is being released. Maybe that's causing that. focus on the back of the neck. That's a part that quite often, um, well for me, I was tensing a bit, I don't know for myself, and I think it's quite a, a standard place where tension is sometimes held. So, and I'm, I'm doing it 
exactly what you would do in something like this box. So I'm going to tell you my body parts are like this. So if you carry on now, both of them open side by side at the same time. Relax. focusing on the same literally key the F flat as if the F flat were in that key that you play with the key so do that now with the same body parts with the same key and I'll do the same with this one focusing on the back of your neck. Other parts start to I don't know, show themselves to me or maybe they were maybe there just as well, but I started noticing the feelings in my shoulders, tension in my shoulders and in my upper back. Whether that was because the back of my neck was saying I need to get you up to your feet it's the other parts that are maybe tensing but my lower my, my back of my neck is still relaxing I just became more aware of other parts that were maybe in tension now this might happen now it's not means you're being notified of more places that are also wanting to be relaxed. So I'm going to focus on the upper back side as I was saying. Even if you don't have any um, feelings of tension or obvious in your upper back, you're just focusing on the upper back. shoulder blades relax, the upper back is calm, and the lower part of the shoulder blades is relaxed. And I'm looking for parts that are um, giving me the rub in the lower part and the lower part of the upper back. something and I'm looking I don't want to cry but I know I'm crying but I can get a feeling and focusing on the back of my neck the upper back is not in tension it's relaxing and I'm aware of other parts of the upper back but as soon as I started talking already started to relax it's almost as if it doesn't need to be the rub it just needs the tension which allows it to be more peaceful that is something that often happens in this type of situation is almost 
service now. This time, you focus on the favor that is within your heart of your mind. Just notice how your body does start to feel more relaxed. notice how how you feel generally how your body feels it's not necessarily you right now anything you need to feel calm it's that spark So there's that gap of calmness and comfort and relaxation. So now feel it. It moves very subtle or discomfort with the body. Notice 